Hello! I'm so glad that we get this chance to be able to connect together with each other and in God's Word. But before we go any further, I just have to say, I miss you. I miss seeing your face. We miss you. We miss gathering in worship. And it is not the same. To be able to do worship online is not the same. So know that you're in our thoughts and in our prayers. And we can't wait to be able to be back together. So from wherever you are, you are loved. And would you just pause and take a deep breath as we pray. Oh God, we do long to be together. We miss our church family. Maybe someone's tuning in for the first time or just new to the area or coming back. God, would you just, wherever we are, whether longtime members or new to this community, would you just move among us right now? Remind us how loved we are by you. Remind us we are not alone. And as we open up your word together just now, would your Holy Spirit connect us together with you and with one another? For we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's a value in the heritage we share as believers in Jesus. My taste in music is, is broad. I enjoy so many different styles and eras of music. I grew up with a pretty eclectic musical taste and I also experienced that in the body of Christ that God gifts people with different gifts of lyrics and of music and it blesses me and it blesses my heart. There's something beautiful about the new song that rises from our lips from our shared experience with each other. I also love the well-tested and proven songs that have lasted for centuries. There are words that have sustained many others before me, and I find those words lifting me up and sustaining my heart as well. It's like when I see a, a YouTube video that has a lot of views. I was watching, or I looked at something that I felt drawn to watch in 31 million views. It's like I knew others have said, this is funny or encouraging or inspiring, and I wanted to watch it too and to be able to view that as well. Now, this isn't always the case. I mean, keep in mind, Baby Shark now has close to 5 billion views, and that is an earworm of a song. Parents, amen? Ava loves it. Okay, so it is sweet sometimes. But views don't always mean that, but there is something about our shared experience, something about words that have lasted the test of time. There are words that have crossed generations and continents. There are words that have spanned cultures, millions and millions of views, these hymns that have been sung in all different times and places. Their meaning has been carried something that we now can have to hide in our hearts and to have on our lips when life or the enemy would seek to pull us away. There are things that we can come back to that ground us, that anchor us. We're starting a new series today called Hymns of Hope, an Anchor for the Soul. Hymns of Hope, an Anchor for the Soul. And each week we'll be looking at a different hymn and being able to understand the depth of the experience of the hymn writer and what it says about what's core and essential to our faith, especially in times like these. Today, Rock of Ages, originally written by Reverend August Toplady in 1763. Now he was a minister in England and the story is told that he was visiting a nearby village to preach and as he was returning, he was hit with this storm and he had to rush to find a place to be able to shelter from the storm. And as he was there weathering this storm, he found this place in the, in the cleft of the rock where he was able to find security even in the midst of this storm. The spot is marked with a plaque that says Rock of Ages. It's even listed that way on the map. He had this experience with God 
that God was able to keep him safely through the storm. Now, historians say that may not have been the place, even though it's marked on maps and there's a, a, a bookstore or a coffee shop named after the Rock of Ages song that is said to have happened right there. We don't know exactly the place, but what we do know is that it was a very real experience for him. And he wrote this song out of the overflow of his experience that, that God was the place he could run to, the place he could hide. Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. This place that he could go, that he could find safety and security. Isaiah 26 verse 4 says, Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. That unchanging place, that space that is secure. Have you ever been on the ocean or perhaps in a lake when a storm comes up. I've been on many boats, sailboats, and all different kinds of boats. And when you're in the water, whether you're in a boat or, or a kayak or whatever you're in, you're at the mercy of the waves. You see, you're subject to the water's motion and energy and gravity. You're going up and down and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it because the waves are moving, you are moving Two, that's what's so troubling when you're in the water's domain. You don't have any control. You are at its mercy. When the wind rises up and the waves rise up, you have this potential that's very real. You could be pulled under. You could drown because you're moving up and down and sideways and it's hard to get your footing. It's hard to keep your perspective when you're moving around. A rock in the water is a meeting of two domains. The rock is not moved by the water. It's connected to the earth. It's a place of both danger and security. Now, the reason I say danger is because if you are coming on in your boat and you're keeping one foot on your boat and one foot on the rock, it's a very dangerous place to be. If you're trying to hold on to the control of your boat and then trying to transfer to the rock, if you're trying to keep both, your foot on each place. It's a very dangerous place to be as the waves crash into the rocks. You see, we have to transfer fully to the rock. Until you're all the way on the rock, you're not safe. The way to get crushed is to try to hold on to the boat and the rock. You see, we must go all in, grab on, change our frame of reference, hide ourselves in the cleft of the rock, as these words say in the hymn. That's the spot where we are most secure. The beautiful gift in Jesus is that he's not disconnected from our struggle or our hardship or our pain. You see, Jesus is the rock in the waves. If you're clinging to the rock and the waves hit you, what happens is the rock transforms the violence of that wave. If you're clinging to the rock, the waves hit you and suddenly they roll off your back, pulled by gravity downwards because the rock has transformed the energy of the wave. Just as the rock is the meeting place for the ocean and the earth, so Jesus is God, also human, the one who meets us right where we are the one who understands what it is that we are going through. In the Old Testament, in Exodus chapter 17, Moses is instructed to strike the rock and water poured forth from the rock and the people, oh, they tasted that water after being so thirsty and desperate. They tasted that water and they lived because of that water. Now, if you go to John chapter 19, after Jesus breathed his last. And I read these words today that the spear pierced his side and water and blood flowed from his side. Jesus, the rock that was smitten. Jesus, the rock that endured that pain as he was saved for us. This is the place where, where water and rock meet this place in Jesus where he is able to bring our salvation. 
When you hang on to Jesus the rock, you're hanging on to the crust of the earth. You see, the whole planet, the one that contains the ocean, is what you're holding on to when you hold on to that piece of rock for it's connected to this crust of the earth. You're holding on to a piece of the basin that holds the entire ocean. Now that's a sure foundation, friends. When you hold on to Jesus, what a grounding you and I can have. We often ask this question, and I do every time I'm thinking through, as I look to this word and as I ask God, I, I say, with this message, what difference does it make? What difference does our Christian faith have when we're going through this right now? What difference does it make if Jesus is our rock of ages? We should ask this question each time we come to the word of God, and especially after we proclaim or share the word of God. The difference, dear friends, is that we go from being helpless to being grounded. We go from this place of hopelessness to security when we grip tightly to the rock of ages. Now, this isn't just a week, it's all going to be okay, friends. You are laid off, you've lost your loved one, you're weary, you're anxious, all of those things, it's going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Now, why? Because we can pull back and gain perspective as we hold to the rock. The rock of ages moves our perspective beyond what we can see just now because Jesus is the rock of all ages. In geological time, it is going to be okay what you and I are facing right now. Does it all work out? Yes, it does. From the perspective of the sovereign one, the one who holds the whole universe, the one who holds the ocean, it is going to be okay. Yet the water can be so isolating. We are disoriented easily in the water. We don't know which way is up or down. In a storm, people don't often know which direction to go. Just like that preacher caught in the storm, we need to find the cleft of the rock, the place where we can shelter, the place where we can hide, holding tight to this one that is immovable. When you grab onto the rock of ages, your frame of reference becomes the crust of the earth. We think, what will happen to me? What will happen to my family? What is happening to this world right now? And then we grab onto Jesus and we're reoriented again. We have perspective once more that we didn't have before. You go from being held by the ocean, powerless to control the waves, to holding on to the one who holds the entire ocean. You go from being held in the grasp of an irrational and angry tempest, helpless and hopeless, to reaching the rock and being grounded by the force and the strength of the creator that holds both you and the ocean waves. That's Jesus. This is the bigger picture. There is more to the story. It's going to be okay. You are not alone. We are in this together. We are connected to the rock of ages, the one who holds it all. The economy feels like it's an ocean surging right now, raging and surging. The news is also up and down, waves surging. No business is safe from the waves. No individual is protected from inflation or depreciation or shortages. There's nothing you can do to control it all. Yet, here we are. Here we are connected to the rock of ages, connected to Jesus Christ. This is what makes all the difference. He hideth my soul in that cleft of the rock. Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin a double cure. Save me from its guilt and power. Jesus, in him we have this security, this freedom. I don't know what the future holds. But the word is still true. I know who holds the future. I know who holds you and I. I can't withstand the waves, but I can hold the rock that holds the ocean. 
I'm not able to hold all that myself or my family need. I can't grip it in my hands, but as I grip tight to Jesus, I know that he is all that I need. This affords me the open-handedness to come before the world in love and in service because I know if I have him, I have all that I need. There's a story in the Old Testament about a king, King Nebuchadnezzar. In Daniel chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream and it disturbs him so deeply that he seeks out the different people, the wise men and the magicians and all of the astrolog astrologers, and he asks them to come and to tell him his dream and to interpret it. Now Daniel is among those who are called to the king and all the others are saying, oh king, live forever, tell us your dream and we will tell you the interpretation. King Nebuchadnezzar is having none of it. He says, you tell me the dream and the interpretation. Daniel goes back and he prays earnestly to God and he says, only you know God, only you know what you have revealed to King Nebuchadnezzar and you will share it with me. You will show us the dream and its interpretation. Daniel goes before King Nebuchadnezzar with this information for him. And he gives all the glory to God and says, only God would be able to share this with me. But he describes the dream perfectly, exactly what Nebuchadnezzar saw. He says that you saw this statue gleaming and brilliant, all different kinds of metal standing tall. You saw a head of gold. You saw a chest of silver. You saw belly and thighs of bronze. You saw legs of iron and you saw feet of partially baked clay and iron. And then in verse 34, while you were watching, the rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue. Then in verse 35, the rock became huge and filled the whole earth. You see, this dream was about kingdoms, each rising up after the other, but each one inferior to the one who had come before it. The rock cut without hands, though, is the kingdom of God. Jesus. <laughs> this is a prophecy about Jesus, the coming kingdom of Jesus that would grow to fill the entire earth. There is a kingdom that will not perish or fade. There is a kingdom that will not be ground down or overcome. There is a kingdom that will endure forever. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse in chapter 2, verse 4, Peter describes coming to the living stone. That not only is Jesus solid and stable and immovable, but Jesus is alive and active and present and working in your life. Peter, of all people, understood this. He says we're living stones built upon this living stone of Jesus, this solid, secure foundation, this cornerstone. And Peter understood this well because this was his experience. Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 17, shares this conversation between Jesus and Peter. Peter recognizes who Jesus is when Jesus asks this question, who do they say that I am? And Peter recognizes Jesus for who he really is. And Jesus says, this, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. Now, some have taken this to mean on, on Peter and on the succession of Peter that I will build my church. But notice in Greek what's happening here. Jesus says, you are Peter, Petros in Greek, meaning rock or rock man. It's, it's a nickname that Jesus gave uh, Peter in, first, in John 1, 42. It could be like calling him Rocky. We have one Rocky at least in our, in our gathering today. So Jesus says, you're Rocky. You're Peter. And then in the next phrase, Jesus uses the word Petra, the feminine word uh, for rock. In other words, it's not a name. It's, it's the, the thing rock. Jesus uses this play on words here. He doesn't say on you and your successors, I will build my church, but he says, you are Peter. You are this small stone. You are this rocky, this little bit of a stone, but on this Petra, on this bedrock, on this foundation boulder, I will build my church. Jesus says my church is to be built on the solid foundation, the stone, the cornerstone of Jesus, of his life and the profession of faith in Jesus, like Peter just did. On this Jesus, this rock, I will build up my church. Peter 
himself was just a stone on top of the foundation stone, upon this bedrock, this cornerstone that was so much bigger than himself. So when he writes this letter later, he says, your living stones being built up on this living stone, capital L, capital S of Jesus, this cornerstone. As Paul himself says in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11, there is no other foundation other than Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation for us. For us who are battered by waves, for us who face uncertainty, there is no other foundation. In a time of crisis, we need to come back to what matters most. That's Jesus. Jesus, the solid foundation of Jesus. We come back to the fact that there is nothing more important than clinging to the one who is Jesus, the rock. There is no other focus needed more now than the kingdom, which will never perish, never fade. The rock cut without human hands that grows to fill the earth is the hope for all of us. This very rock will support you even now. When you're standing on the shaky ground of uncertainty, when your heart aches at the overwhelming losses in your life, when you find yourself wading through the muck of anxiety, in that very place, Jesus desires to show you a solid foundation. I waited patiently for the Lord, the psalmist says. He turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the miry pit above the mud and the mire. He set my feet on the rock and gave me a firm place to stand. That even in the muck and the mire of the loss or of the anxiety or of the uncertainty, God wants to set your feet on the solid foundation, that rock of Jesus Christ. Let your hope be rekindled today. The one who created you longs to hide you and hold you in the cleft of the rock. Jesus is waiting. Turn to Jesus to find the solid foundation, the cornerstone for your life. If you're back after a long time away from God, welcome. It's no accident that you found us today. You have a sure foundation. If you've been stressed this week and you need a reminder that there is one who is solid and secure, you have a sure foundation. If you're facing insurmountable challenges and you need the assurance today that it's going to be okay and that Jesus is with you, I remind you, you have a sure foundation, the rock of all ages, the one who holds the oceans, holds you as you grip tightly to him. Catherine Nurney writes in her book, of a wise and loving father who sat down with each of his almost teenage sons and he used this word sanctuary with them to assure them that they would always be welcome no matter what they had done. He spoke of their future mistakes and the regrets that they would have and said, when you might fear consequences, when you're not sure what is going to happen, come to me and only say the word sanctuary and I will know. You can sit there in silence and I will keep you sheltered by a love that will never let you go. No matter what you did, we will get through it together. I want you to know this now and you can count on it when you feel despondent, when you feel like a failure, when you want to run away. I will be your sanctuary until you can carry on. Oh, I love those words. I can imagine Jesus saying that to you even now. My dear friend, I am your rock of ages. I am your shelter. I am your sanctuary. I am your perspective. I am your shield. You will be okay. I will be with you forever. Whether you're just coming back and you feel ashamed of what you've done or you, you wonder about the regrets and the guilt that you hold, find me to be your freedom from guilt, from its power. You have me in all whatever place you're coming from, you have sanctuary in Jesus. All that you have to do is say yes. 
Jesus is ready and waiting to shelter you, to hold you close. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. I'd like you to hear all the words of this song. This is a very beautiful hymn. Hear these words, Rock of Ages. <laughs> 